Playing with Power MTG. Powerful cards, powerful formats. Be sure to check out Dragon Shield for all of the best accessories to protect your decks. TCG Player for cards at great prices while supporting local game stores. And Patreon where you get awesome benefits for your direct support. We will be going to Command Fest Richmond June 3rd through the 5th and Command Fest Vegas June 10th through the 12th. We will be recording games of CDH while we were there, so stop on by, say hello, and let's record some games together. Now, let's start out by showcasing our fighters this evening. First, we have Adam piloting the partner pair of Ishai, Ujitai Dragon Speaker, and Tevich Zot, Doom of Fools. This is a mid-range deck focusing on slowing down the board and finishing off with a combo. Adam's opening hand contains a Necropotence, Force of Will, Thassa's Oracle, Arcane Signet, Swan Song, Spire of Industry, and a Marsh Flats. Next, we have Chad piloting Go Shintai of Life's Origin. This is a Shrine Tribal deck that attempts to grind people down by abusing its commander's ability in conjunction with Shrine's powerful triggers. Chad's opening hand contains an Arid Mesa, Vampiric Tutor, Bloom Tender, Imperial Seal, Arcane Signet, City of Brass, and a Mana Vault. After that, we have Noah piloting Grawlnock the Omnivore. This is a mid-range Hermit Druid deck that attempts to mill its library with its commander and cast a Thassa's Oracle for the win. Noah's opening hand contains a Tarnished Citadel, Mana Crypt, Chrome Mox, Oko Thief of Crowns, Birds of Paradise, Mental Misstep, and a Swan Song. Finally, we have Russ piloting Satoru Umizawa. This is yet another mid-range deck that looks to abuse its commander's ability to cheat massive threats such as Blight Steel Colossus onto the battlefield. It can also fall back to a classic combo finish. Rust's opening hand contains an Urza Saga, Vampiric Tutor, Flusterstorm, Dark Ritual, Jinja Tax's Core Augur, Swamp, and an Opposition Agent. Without further ado, let's kick off this haggling Hallmark hair splitting hallucination. Adam wins the Pop Tart Gambling Challenge and gets to start us off. Adam draws a card for turn and plays a Marsh Flats. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up an Underground Sea onto the battlefield. He passes. Chad draws a card for turn and plays an Arid Mesa. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Taiga onto the battlefield. He casts a Mana Vault. In response, Noah pays 2 life to cast Mental Misstep, countering the Vault. Chad passes the turn to Noah. Noah draws and plays a Tarnished Citadel. He casts a Mana Crypt. He follows it up with a Chrome Mox, imprinting Birds of Paradise. He taps Tarnished Citadel to help cast its commander, Grawlnock the Omnivore. All set up with a powerful value engine on turn 1, Noah ships the turn to Rust. Rust draws and plays a Swamp. He gives the turn to Adam. Adam draws and plays a Vault of Champions. He casts Arcane Signet. He passes. Chad draws and plays a City of Brass. He taps the City of Brass to help cast Arcane Signet. He follows it up with an Imperial Seal. In response, Russ casts Dark Ritual, adding 3 black. The table pauses, and Russ flashes in an Opposition Agent. Everyone laughs, Chad cries, and then Opposition Agent resolves. Russ fetches up an Underground Sea from Chad's library into exile, and Chad loses 2 life. Chad, dismayed that he got played, passes to Noah. During his upkeep, Noah loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes 3 damage. He draws and moves to combat. He attacks Chad with Grawlnock. Grawlnock triggers, and Noah mills Cephalid Illusionist, Thassa's Oracle, and Grim Monolith. Grawlnock triggers again, and Noah exiles them with a Croak counter. Chad takes a hit, and in his second main phase, Noah casts Grim Monolith from exile through Grawlnock. He follows it up with a Lion's Eye Diamond. All finished up, Noah passes. During his upkeep, Rust casts Vampiric Tutor. He fetches up a card onto the top of his library and loses two life. He draws and casts a Mana Crypt. He plays Chad's Underground Sea from exile. Rust gives the turn to Adam. Adam draws and plays a Spire of Industry. He casts Necropotence. In response, Noah casts Swan Song. In response, Adam taps Spire of Industry to help cast his own Swan Song, targeting Noah's Swan Song. In response, Rust casts Flusterstorm, with all copies targeting Adam's Swan Song. Flusterstorm resolves, Adam's Swan Song is countered, and with Noah's Swan Song still on the stack, Adam casts Force of Will, paying a life and exiling Mindbreak Trap, targeting Swan Song. Force of Will counters Swan Song, and Necropotence finally resolves. Adam activates Necropotence 17 times, paying 17 life and exiling 17 cards. He moves to his end step and puts the exiled cards into his hand. He passes, discarding to hand size, exiling the discarded cards. Chad draws and casts up Bloom Tender. He does nothing else and passes to Noah. During his upkeep, Noah loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes 3 damage. He draws and moves to combat. He attacks Adam with Grawlnock. Grawlnock triggers and Noah mills Concordant Crossroads, Laboratory Maniac, and a Flusterstorm. Grawlnock triggers again, and Noah exiles the permanence with Croak Counters. Adam takes it, and in his second main phase, Noah taps his Tarnished Citadel to help cast Brainstorm. He draws three and puts two back on top. He plays a City of Brass and then immediately taps it to help cast Oko, Thief of Crowns. He activates Oko's first ability, targeting his own Lion's Eye Diamond. He gives the turn to Rust. During his upkeep, Rust loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes three damage. He draws and plays an Urza Saga, getting its first counter. 
He casts his commander, Satoru Umizawa. He passes. Adam skips his draw step due to Necropotence. He plays a Morphic Pool for turn. He casts a Mana Crypt and follows it up with a Talisman of Dominance. He taps the Spider of Industry to help cast Humility. In response, Rust casts Fierce Guardianship for its alternate cost. Humility is countered, everyone thanks Rust, and then Adam activates Necropotence four times. He moves to his end step and puts the exiled cards into his hand. The turn moves to Chad. Chad draws and casts a Jukai Naturalist. He taps the City of Brass to help cast Go Shintai of Life's Origin. He gives the turn to Noah. During his upkeep, Noah wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and activates Oko's first ability, targeting Rust Satoru Umizawa. He moves to combat and attacks Adam with Grolnok. Grolnok triggers and Noah mills Polluted Delta, Seed of the Side Nod, and Wild Growth. Grolnok triggers again and Noah exiles them with Croak Counters. Adam takes it and in his second main phase, Noah plays a Seed of the Psy Nod from Exile through Grolnok. He casts Wild Growth from Exile, targeting Tarnished Citadel. He follows it up with a Cephalid Illusionist. He passes. During his upkeep, Rust wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and in his first main phase, Urza Saga gets another counter. He moves to combat and attacks Adam with his Opposition Agent and Elked Commander. Adam declares no blocks and, in response, Rust activates the ninjutsu ability of Walker of Secret Ways, returning his commander to his hand. Adam takes it and Walker of Secret Ways triggers. Rust looks at Adam's hand and doesn't like what he sees. Rust gives the turn to Adam. During his upkeep, Adam loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes 3 damage. He skips his draw step due to Necropotence. In his main phase, he casts Silence. The table passes priority and brace for the worst. Silence resolves and then Adam plays an Ancient Tomb for turn. He casts Praetor's Grasp, targeting Rust. He searches Rust's library and then exiles a Soul Ring. Adam plays Rust's Soul Ring from Exile. He follows it up with a Time Twister. Twister resolves and everyone shuffles their graveyard in hand into their library and draws 7 cards. Adam passes to Chad. Chad draws and casts Chrome Mox, imprinting Imperial Seal. He plays Sanctum of Stone Fangs. Go Shintai triggers and Chad creates a 1-1 Shrine Creature token. He plays Sakashima of a Thousand Faces. It enters as a copy of Go Shintai. It and its commander both trigger and he creates two 1-1 Shrines. He taps the City of Brass to help cast Go Shintai of Lost Wisdom. It enters and both Go Shintais of Life's Origin trigger, creating two 1-1 Shrines. He plays a Flooded Strand. He moves to combat and attacks Adam with Jukai Naturalist. Adam declares no blocks and dies. Chad gains two life and then he moves to the end of his turn. Go Shintai of Lost Wisdom triggers and Chad pays. He targets himself and mills 10. He ships the turn to Noah. During his upkeep, Noah loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes 3 damage. He draws and immediately moves to combat, attacking Rust with Grolnok. Grolnok triggers and Noah mills Mox Amber, Soul Ring, and a Mana Vault. Grolnok triggers again and Noah exiles him with a Croak Counter. Rust takes it and in his second main phase, Noah casts Mox Amber from Exile. He casts Mana Vault from Exile. He casts Soul Ring from Exile. He plays a Polluted Delta from Exile. He activates Oka's second ability, targeting Rust's Opposition Agent. With his Opposition Agent Elked, Noah cracks his Delta and pays a life. In response, Chad cracks his Flooded Strand, pays a life, and fetches up a Volcanic Island onto the battlefield. Then Noah fetches up a Tropical Island onto the battlefield. Noah transmutes Muddle the Mixture, fetching up a Lightning Greaves into his hand. He casts Lightning Greaves. He activates Greaves, equipping them to Grawlnock. He activates them again, targeting Cephalid Illusionist. Cephalid triggers and Noah mills Court of Calling, City of Traders, and Misty Rainforest. Grawlnock triggers and the permanents exile with Croak Counters. Noah presents a loop of moving his Greaves to his commander and back to his Illusionist, milling his entire library. All permanents then get exiled with Croak Counters. He casts Lotus Petal from exile. He casts a Felwar Stone. He follows it up with a Thassa's Oracle. It enters and with the trigger on the stack, Rust casts Baleful Mastery for its alternate cost, targeting Go Shintai. Noah responds with a Pact of Negation. Baleful Mastery is countered, Thassa's Oracle ability resolves, and Noah wins the game. Well that was a pretty fast one, so let's do another one, shall we? First we have Rust, who decides to try out his Go Shintai of Life's Origin deck with Gigantha as a companion. This is a combo deck looking to mill itself out and then reanimate enchantments with its commander. Rust's opening hand contains a Taiga, Soul Ring, Noble Hierarch, Fierce Guardianship, Veil of Summer, Reanimate, and a Zombie Infestation. Next we have Noah piloting the Gitrog monster. This classic deck is looking to discard lands to chain through his library and eventually win through a highly convoluted and overly complicated line. Noah's opening hand contains a Demonic Tutor, Oblivion Crown, Snow-Covered Forest, Elves of Deep Shadow, Misty Rainforest, and his London Mulligans are Ulamog the Infinite Gyre and Homeward Path. After that we have Chad piloting Sirkara the Bold. This is a proactive burn deck looking to quickly storm off and churn through its library to burn out its opponents. Chad's opening hand contains a Mountain, Jeweled Lotus, Chrome Mox, Valakut Awakening, Dragon's Rage Channeler, Mox Amber, and his London Mulligan is a Grape Shot. 
Finally, we have Adam, Pounding Yuriko the Tiger Shadow. This is a mid-range deck that focuses on using ninjas for card advantage in conjunction with its commander. Adam's opening hand contains a Snow-Covered Island, Island, Flooded Strand, Sensei's Divining Top, Fourth Bridge Prowler, Tainted Pact, and an Opposition Agent. And Rust gets to start us off. Rust draws and plays a Taiga. He casts a Noble Hierarch. He passes. Noah draws and plays a Snow-Covered Forest. He casts Elves of Deep Shadow and gives the turn to Chad. Chad draws and plays a Mountain. He casts Jeweled Lotus. He follows it up with a Chrome Mox and printing Valakut Awakening. He cracks his Jeweled Lotus to help cast his commander, Sir Karah the Bold. He casts Mox Amber. He casts Dragon's Rage Channeler. With a blazing fast start and next to no cards in hand, Chad chips the turn. Adam draws and plays a Flooded Strand. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up an Underground Sea onto the battlefield. He casts Fourth Bridge Prowler. It enters and targets Noah's Elves of Deep Shadow, killing it. Adam passes. Rust draws and plays a Bayou. He casts Mystic Remora. He follows it up with a Soul Ring. All finished up, he gives the turn to Noah. Noah draws and plays a Misty Rainforest. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Bayou onto the battlefield. He casts Demonic Tutor. Remora triggers and Rust draws. Demonic Tutor resolves and Noah fetches up a card into his hand. Noah passes. Chad draws and activates his commander, pinging Noah for one. Sir Karan triggers and Chad exiles a command beacon from the top of his library. He follows it up with a Jessica's Will, targeting Adam. Dragon's Rage Channeler and Remora trigger. Rust draws and Chad surveils a snow-covered mountain into his graveyard. Then Jessica's Will resolves. Chad adds six red and then exiles Ignite Memories, Snow-Covered Mountain, and a mountain. He plays a snow-covered mountain. He casts Ignite Memories with a storm count of two, targeting Adam and Noah. Channeler and Remora trigger. Rust draws from Remora and Chad surveils, leaving it on top. Then Ignite resolves. Noah reveals a card at random, which is a Mana Crypt. Then Adam reveals a card at random, which is an island. He moves to combat and attacks Rust with Channeler. Chad passes the turn. Adam draws and plays a Dark Slick Shores. He attacks Rust with Fourth Bridge Prowler. Rust declares no blocks and before damage, Adam activates his commander's ninjutsu ability, returning Fourth Bridge Prowler to his hand and putting Yuriko onto the battlefield tapped and attacking. Rust takes it and Yuriko triggers. Adam reveals a Loom Duel's Vault and each opponent loses two. Adam passes, discarding to hand size. During his upkeep, Rust pays for his Remora. He draws and plays a Flooded Strand. He casts Carpet of Flowers. He moves to a second main phase and adds a green through Carpet. He pays three and puts Gigantha the Wellspring into his hand. He cracks his Flooded Strand, pays a life, and fetches up a Scrubland onto the battlefield. He casts Zombie Infestation. All finished up, he gives the turn to Noah. Noah draws and plays a Phyrexian Tower. He casts a Mana Crypt. Remora triggers and Rust draws. He casts his Commander, the Gitrog Monster. He ships the turn to Chad. During his upkeep, Chad activates Sir Karah, pinging Rust for one. Sir Karah triggers and Chad exiles Gutshot. Chad draws for turn and pays two life to help cast Gutshot, targeting Noah. Remora and Chandler trigger. Rust draws and Chad surveils one, keeping it on top. Then Gutshot deals one damage to Noah and Sir Karah triggers. Chad exiles Flame Rift and then immediately casts it. Chandler and Remora trigger. Rust draws and then Chad surveils Valakut, the Molten Pinnacle, into his graveyard. Flame Rift then deals four damage to everyone. Sir Karah triggers and Chad exiles Mana Vault, Gemstone Caverns, Treasure Nabber, and Volcanic Spray. He plays the Gemstone Caverns. He casts Mana Vault, Chandler and Remora trigger. Rust draws and Chad surveils Leyline of Punishment into his graveyard. He casts Treasure Nabber. He casts Volcanic Spray. Chandler and Remora trigger again. Rust draws and then Chad surveils, leaving it on top. Volcanic Spray then deals one damage to all players and creatures without flying, killing Noble Hierarch. Sir Karah triggers and Chad exiles Pyroblast, Wheel of Misfortune, and two Snow-Covered Mountains. He moves to combat and attacks Rust with Dragon's Rage Chandler, which now has Delirium. Rust takes it and Chad gives the turn to Adam. Adam draws and casts Fourth Bridge Prowler. It enters and targets Chad's Treasure Nabber. Adam moves to combat and attacks Chad with Yuriko. Chad takes it and Yuriko triggers. Adam reveals Commandeer and each opponent loses seven. In a second main phase, Adam plays an island. He passes. At the end of Adam's turn, Rust activates Zombie Infestation, discarding Gigantha the Wellspring and Treasonous Ogre, creating a 2-2 zombie. The turn moves to Rust. During his upkeep, Rust pays for his Remora. He draws and in his first main phase, he adds two black through his Carpet of Flowers. He plays a Forbidden Orchard for turn. He casts Wishclaw Talisman. He taps Forbidden Orchard, giving Noah a 1-1 Spirit to help cast Reanimate, targeting Gigantha the Wellspring. In response, Adam casts Commandeer for its alternate cost, exiling Force of Will and Blink Moth Infusion, targeting Reanimate. Remora triggers and Rust draws. Commandeer resolves and Adam reanimates Gigantha, losing 5 life. Rust activates Witchclaw Talisman, fetching up a card into his hand and passing Witchclaw to Noah. He discards Elvish Mystic and Gemstone Caverns to Zombie Infestation, creating a 2-2 zombie. He passes. During his upkeep, Noah wins his Mana Crypt roll. Gitrog triggers, he floats a green, and then sacrifices Snow-Covered Forest. Gitrog triggers again, and he draws. 
Still in his upkeep, he activates Wishclaw Talisman, fetching up a card into his hand and passing Wishclaw to Adam. Noah draws for turn and then sacrifices a spirit to Phyrexian Tower for two black. He casts Oblivion Crown, targeting Gitrog. Treasure Nabber and Remora trigger. Rust draws and then Chad gains control of Noah's Mana Crypt. Oblivion Crown resolves and Noah activates it, discarding Dakmore Salvage. Gitrog triggers and Noah dredges two to return Dakmore back to his hand. Using this loop, he can continually dredge lands and shuffle titans into his graveyard, stacking more and more draw triggers onto the stack. He continues this process until he mills Ulamog the Infinite Gyre. It triggers and with the shuffle trigger on the stack, Adam responds by casting Tainted Pact. Remora triggers and Rust draws. Knowing this could stop his combo, Noah responds by discarding Kozilek, Butcher of Truth. Kozilek triggers and Noah shuffles his graveyard into his library. Noah repeats the Dakmore loop on top of Tainted Pact, stacking up enough triggers to draw his library. With his library in his hand, he discards seven non-land cards to gain Threshold. He casts Cabal Ritual, now with Threshold, adding five black. He casts Crop Rotation, sacrificing Phyrexian Tower. He holds priority, discarding Emergent Zone, Kozilek, and a large pile of non-land cards. Noah then shuffles his graveyard into his library. Remora triggers and Rush draws. Gitrog triggers and Noah draws. Crop Rotation resolves and then Noah fetches up an Emergent Zone onto the battlefield. He cracks his Emergent Zone, giving his spells Flash until end of turn. Gitrog triggers and Noah draws. He flashes in a Deathrite Shaman. He flashes in Mox Diamond, discarding Bizarre of Baghdad. Gitrog and Remora trigger. Rust draws and Noah responds to the Gitrog trigger by discarding Ulamog, shuffling his graveyard back into his library. He then draws through Gitrog. Noah flashes in a Mana Vault and Rust draws through Remora. He flashes in a Soul Ring. Remora and Treasure Nabber trigger. Chad steals Noah's Mana Vault and Rust draws. Noah then flashes in Chrome Mox, imprinting Wild Growth and Rust draws through Remora. Noah flashes in Finehorn Elves. Noah casts Abrupt Decay, targeting Mystic Remora. Remora and Treasure Naver trigger. Naver steals Mox Diamond and Rust draws. Remora is destroyed and then Noah flashes in a Lotus Petal. He discards seven non-land cards and helps cast Cabal Ritual with Threshold, adding five black. He cracks his petal and casts Crop Rotation, holding priority and discarding Gaia's Cradle. Gitrog triggers and Noah shuffles in his graveyard with Ulamog before he draws. Crop Rotation resolves and Noah tutors out, well, a, a Gaia's Cradle. <laughs> he then taps his cradle for three green. He presents a loop of tutoring out Guy's Cradle with Crop Rotation and then tapping it for infinite green mana. Noah casts Culling the Weak, sacrificing Deathrite Shaman as an additional cost. He flashes in a Finale of Devastation where X equals 10,000, fetching up Deathrite Shaman onto the battlefield with haste. He activates Deathrite, exiling an instant from Adam's graveyard and each of his opponents lose two life. He presents a loop of sacrificing Deathrite, tutoring it back out with Finale of Devastation where X is greater than 10, and then activating Deathrite for every instant and sorcery in his opponent's graveyard. Once out of instants and sorceries in his opponent's graveyards, he discards instants and sorceries into his own graveyard to feed Deathrite. He does this over and over until the table is dead and Noah wins the game. Ladies and gentlemen, what a night of games. Congrats to Noah on both of his wins. His amphibian-based gameplay really paid off. In game one, he amassed mana and card advantage through his commander and transitioned it perfectly into a combo finished. In game two, he bided his time and waited for the perfect opportunity to go off. The most valuable card in game one goes the Grolnok. After playing it turn one, Noah was able to mill so many cards into the Croak Zone over the course of the game. He was able to transition this into huge mana and card advantage over his opponents. The most valuable card in game two goes to Emergent Zone. This card allowed Noah to combo off at instant speed when faced with interaction from his opponents. The power and versatility of this card in conjunction with the Gitrog monster allows for some busted combos. Well that about wraps it up for this episode. Tune in next time when we duke it out to see who will be king of the competitive EDH table. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you next time.